Following their crushing defeat at the Etihad, Arsenal's eight-point lead at the top of the Premier League has now been cut to two. And were City to win both of their games in hand, they would actually trail them by four. Full disclosure. Hello, everybody. Adam Cleary, 442 here. And is it all over the title race in the Premier League? Well, no. No, it's, it's not. That's not how maths works. But also, it might be. Now, come here. If I said, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, but if I said it was by going 4-4-2 and playing really long, basically Mike Bassetting the situation, would you believe me? Because it was. Right, so quick as a bee, I'm just going to go over how Arsenal and Man City normally set up because you need to understand what it is they normally do to understand what they didn't do. Like, just come here. So Manchester City normally come out in a 4-3-3, except it's not a 4-3-3 because what they want to do is end up with a box midfield and a front five. So the way they go about that normally is Gundogan and De Bruyne, they push right up. Rodri's normally in the middle. He goes out to that side and it has been John Stones, but they've messed around with it. He comes across from right back, inverts it in the middle and the back four shuffle into a back three. Voila, three to Two, five, box midfield. Now, Arsenal, they are nominally listed as a 4-2-3-1, but they want to do the exact same thing. And the way they do that is they've already got Martinelli, Odegaard, and Saka pushed right up, so they leave a little bit of room. Shaka comes into the advanced space, Zinchenko inverts into there, and voila, once the defence comes across, 3-2-5 with a box midfield. Now, even though Arsenal have been off the pace in recent weeks, these are still undeniably the two best teams in the league for playing this exact system, so it was going to be really fascinating to see what happened when they just went equally up against each other like that. Who would give? But curiously, what gave was Pep Guardiola. And what he gave was not one single City, after playing it almost exclusively since the World Cup and in their most important game of the season so far, just binned off their entire approach. They just went with a flat four at the back and not even one with overlapping full backs or anything exciting like that. They just put all four of them in a nice big row. I'll have to move the magazine for this. And then just sat them. Really deep, really unadventurous. Bernardo Silva played all the way out wide, Grealish stuck to his side over there, and De Bruyne just kind of floated around Haaland as if he was a little man centre forward playing with a big man target player. You know, like the good old days. And the reason they did this, right, is because, and Roberto De Zerbi sort of pioneered this at Brighton this season, okay? It's all well and good working out how you will beat a team's press, knowing how they're gonna come at you and coming up with ways you can get around that. But what Pep wanted to do here, and what for the first 30 minutes of this football game, he did absolutely unbelievably well, was he didn't beat the press, he controlled the press. Put players in positions and situations where they wouldn't normally be to force Arsenal to press in a way they wouldn't normally do to exploit the holes that would leave. It's like genuine 4D chess stuff, this. So this is how Arsenal build up. Yes, but it isn't how they press. I'm just going to wave my magic wand here. Now, when they normally press, and especially how they thought they'd be pressing in this game, they're up against three defenders. So Jesus, Saka and Martinelli, they can all take a man each, close down when they need to, move the ball around, just how it normally works. But here, there was four, and because because the two wide ones weren't even pushing on, that forced them to split themselves massively across that front line. Now, a press is all about squeezing the right areas at the right time. So if you've actually got a man disadvantage and you spread out across the entire width of the pitch, it's impossible to do. And whatever side of the pitch they were on, one of those centre midfielders, whether it was Rodri or Gundogan, they would come in to make a little triangle in these areas of the pitch. Now, because Man City's wide attackers weren't coming back to get involved with this, they were staying really high. That meant the fullbacks, Ben White and Zinchenko, had a real problem of getting involved with that. They couldn't really push up to join in because one or two passes and they're in. So that meant that all three of Arsenal's midfielders had to push up into these areas to try and help with the press because City were just knocking it around for fun. And as you can see, what does that leave? An enormous amount of space in this area. So what City were doing was they were using these little triangles then getting it to one of the centre-backs who would then launch it long into this area here. It's a 4-4-2 with a long ball. <laughs> And that meant that De Bruyne could drop a little deeper. The defender doesn't want to go with him because you don't want to leave Haaland one-on-one. -on -one. He gets time, he gets space, he can put in Grealish, he can put in Gundogan, he can work with Haaland, he can do whatever he wants. Or, as we're about to see for the goal, Haaland can even drop deep because the defender will go with him, leaving De Bruyne one-on-one. -on -one. He can play the ball through and De Bruyne is in. City are very happy, they're knocking it around, they're playing at the back, they've got one of these little triangles on the go, they're just waiting for Arsenal to push up sufficiently and then bang, the long ball goes into Haaland. He has got holding beat for days receives the ball, brings it down, plays in Kevin De Bruyne, he runs through 1-0 Manchester City. And this happened a couple of times in the first half, either it was Haaland dropping off or De Bruyne and they linked up with each other. City should have been 3 or 4 nil up in the first half off this ploy alone. And that's not a criticism of Arsenal, by the way. They will have worked on playing against a very specific system all week in training, turned up and it just 
wasn't there. They looked all at sea and confused and disorganized because they would have been. They would have been scrambling to find solutions to this on the pitch, and it took them about half an hour to come up with any. In the end, they moved Martinelli all the way back to sort of keep an eye on Bernardo Silva. That sort of allowed Zinchenko to move over, so they had a little extra man here, and they sat a little deeper, and it did help. But by that point, it was 1-0, so you were absolutely flying. And when they got the set-piece goal, again, Pulis ball, that was it. Game over. Now... Look, everybody's talking about what a genius ploy this was from Pep, and just when they think they've got the answers, he changes the questions, but I just want to offer a small defence of Arsenal here. To me, they looked absolutely shattered. Talked in a recent video, which should be appearing on screen right about now, how their problems with defending in the last couple of games have largely come from, yes, Saliba's missing and they've got holding instead, and that has a knock-on effect around the team, but also they're making so many little mistakes and they're doing so many things wrong that they weren't previously, and I genuinely think the reason for that it's not a witch has cast a spell on them. I think they're just really physically and mentally tired. And I think what illustrated this so well last night was how Kevin De Bruyne looked like he just had three weeks off in the Bahamas and came back and he was running circles around everyone, whereas Saka and Erdegaard, the two players who make everything happen in an attacking sense for Arsenal, just looked leggy and second to every ball and they were misplacing passes. Like this City goal here, Odegaard just doesn't really think and the pass is so half-hearted. It's just so unlike how he's been this season. So, yep, nerd, I ran the numbers. Over the course of this entire season, Kevin De Bruyne has played over 600 minutes less than Martin Odegaard and nearly a thousand minutes less than Bakayo Saka. Even just counting from the end of the World Cup, that's 300 minutes less than Odegaard and nearly 400 minutes less than Saka. And that really did jump out at me as quite surprising because City have been in everything this season. They got to the quarterfinals of the League Cup. They're still in the semi-finals of the Champions League. They've been second best to Arsenal in the Prem, so they've not really been able to take the foot off the gas. They've been chasing them down all season and they're in the final of the FA Cup. It's almost impossible for them to have played more games this season. And yet De Bruyne, arguably their most important player in terms of how the whole team functions, has missed quite a lot of that. In fact, of the 26 games he's been available since the World Cup, he's only completed 90 minutes in eight of those and didn't start seven. And I know that might just sound like, oh, classic Pep, he likes to rotate, he likes to tinker, but if you just snip out the Sheffield United game where they were playing lower league opposition, and no disrespect, but it's one you can rotate for, he's actually started all of the last eight, their most important run of the season, he hasn't missed any of it. And I think that might be the cleverest thing Pep has done this season, not this genius tactical tweak, but just sparing the legs of his best players in the early months of the season so that in the second half, after the World Cup, they would genuinely look levels and levels above their nearest competition. And so they didn't look tired at all last night, they looked fresh, they looked hungry, they looked like they're going to win every single game they play, whereas Arsenal, a team who don't have the squad depth or the luxury to be able to make those kind of changes, just look knackered. So my defense of Arsenal is that this isn't really their fault. It's not that they got found out or they can't play at this level or they can't hang with a team like City. Of course they can. They're the best team in the league all season. It's just that they got done by a tactical mastermind for 30 minutes and seasons are just so long, man. So long and so hard. But that being said, as the saying goes, my friends, it is not over until the bald Spanish man win so let's know what you think is going to happen in the title race in the comments below and of course don't forget like share subscribe you know the drill there's a button you click it and you get to see all the fun videos all of them in the meantime though genuinely thank you so much for watching i thought that game was great and i've had a lovely time talking about it so thank you for watching this and letting me do that for a job i've been adam cleary this has been 442 and i'll see you soon bye